Hi, I'm going to make a few videos and teach you how to use LTS files to perform circuit simulation. So today we start with the basic. Later on, we see how to drive MOSFETs, coupled inductors, and also how to perform optimizations of circuit parameter in LTS files. Okay, let's get started with our first video. The case that I want to show you is a transient analysis with an RC circuit. We have a DC source at time equal to zero. We turn on the switch. And this capacitor initially has zero volt, gradually it will be charged and eventually it reaches to the final value. So first we analyze this problem analytically and then we see how to do the simulation in LTS spice. For the first order transient circuits, we know that the general solution can be written like this. If the switch is closed and we wait for very long, the capacitor will be fully charged, so the voltage will be equal to the source voltage. So this V infinity will be actually V0. And at beginning, we said that the voltage of capacitor is zero. So V zero minus is zero and capacitor voltage is continuous. Therefore, V zero plus is also zero. So this is zero, this is V zero. And to obtain time constant, we have to look at the capacitor side and the sources will be disabled. So this is short, R will come here. So the time constant is RC. Therefore, we know that the solution of this circuit will be V zero time one minus E power minus T over RC time ut, which means for time before zero, there's no voltage, voltage is zero, and after time equal to zero, the voltage will, this one is one, basically it follows this equation. Sometimes we want to switch on at a different time, so time is not zero, t is equal to t zero. In that case, in the equation, we have to replace t with t minus t zero, u t minus t zero, which basically means that up to this point, voltage is zero, and then it follows this equation. Okay, so now we know the analytical solution of this circuit. We are going to implement it in LTSPICE and check whether our LTSPICE simulation matches with our analytical calculation. Now, first thing that we have to do is to download LTSPICE and install it. You come to Google, I put this link in the description. You search for LTSPICE, analog devices, download LTSPICE. You come here, depending on your system, you download the software. Okay, so now that the software is downloaded, you're going to install it. All right, so installation is complete. We have to run LTSPICE. All right, so we have the software open. First thing we do, we click on File, New Schematic. Now we are going to create our circuit. We need a voltage source, so here is a voltage source. You left click on it, and when it comes here, if you move your mouse, it moves, and then you again left click, it stays there. Now you right click, this one disappears. We need a resistor, left click, you select it. If you click Control and R, you can rotate it. Another left click, and then move your mouse away, right click, this one disappears. Capacitor, same way, left click, select it. Bring it to the schematic, another left click, move your mouse away, right click, this one disappears. All right, we also need to put a switch. Here we're going to use a voltage control switch. So you're gonna click on edit, components. Here you search for SW. This is a voltage control switch. Click place, again, control R, Three times, this one comes here. I place it here. I move your mouse away, right click, this one disappears. Okay, so we have all the components that we need. So to move one component, you can click on this and then touch the component. Then you have selected it, you can move it away. Okay, I place it here and then move your mouse away, right click, this one disappears. Now we have to connect. This is the wire, you click on it, left click, another left click here, you come to here, left click, left click, again, left click, go down, left click. So basically this one, by doing left click, you can connect the circuits together. This is very intuitive, you manage to do it yourself. Left click, left click, left click, left click. Okay, so in order to drive the switch, we also need a voltage supply. So I'm going to use another voltage supply. Bring it here, control R, and I'm going to place it here. Left click, right click, this one disappears. 
If you left click anywhere on the circuit and hold it down, you can move the whole circuit. And if you click this one, it fits to the canvas. Okay, so I select wire. I'm going to connect this one together. Left click, left click, left click. Left click, left click, left click, left click. So this is our circuit. We can set the values. Let's put the value of resistor. So you right click on it. You select the number. Let's we put it 1000 ohm or 1K. Let's say we put it 1K. For capacitor, you can right click again. And here you select the value. Let's put it 1 micro farad. Okay. So we set the capacitor value, we set the resistor, we have the switch. Here we should set the voltage of the switch. So you right click on the voltage source. It says DC value or series resistance. What you have to do, click on advance. Select pulse. Initial voltage is zero. Let's say the voltage that we apply to the switch is 10 volt. We want to apply the voltage to the switch after 10 milliseconds. So here I put 10 milliseconds. T rise time, let's say, is zero. T fall time is zero. T on, we select one second because the whole simulation that we run, we, we are going to run it for only 50 milliseconds. So these are much larger. It doesn't impact our simulation. So we click OK. You can zoom out a bit. And if you click on move, select this one. You can move it a little bit away if you want. Place it here. OK. For the DC source, we can right click on the DC source. We can set a value, let's say 10 volt, and the resistance value, let's say we put it zero. Click OK. Again, you can move these properties wherever you want. OK, right click. Next step is that we have to define the model of the switch. So we click on help. LTS Spice help, this page will appear. Here, if you click SW switch, you search for it, and then voltage control switch, so you click on this. We know that in order to model the switch, we have to define the parameter of the switch. So the parameter of the switch are, for example, threshold voltage, hysteresis voltage, on resistance, off resistance, series inductance, series voltage, current limit. So we have to define them. If you don't define them, it considers the value as the default value. OK, so we have to copy this line. Copy. We come back to our model. So here you have to insert a directive. So click on this black one. Maybe we should zoom out a bit. Click on this directive. A window opens. We have to paste our line here. This my switch is the name of the switch. For us here is SW. Let's change the name as, for example, SW1. And then this is on resistance. For example, I put it, yeah, one milli. Off resistance here in this case is one mega ohm. Threshold is this one. Threshold, let's put it half a volt. We are going to apply 10 volt to the pins of this uh, switch. So when the voltage goes above half a volt, it operates. And then these two, let's assume that they are not there. I can delete them. OK, so here we have the model of the switch. The name should match with this one. Right click, so this one name is SW1. OK, so we have set the switch, set the parameters, everything is OK. Now we have to give the transient study parameter. So you click on simulation, configure analysis, stop time. Let's say you want to stop it at 50 millisecond. You want to save the data from zero. Time step one, epo minus seven. Okay, so this is the transient study we have. Okay, so we set the transient analysis, switch parameter, everything. We need also to add a ground. I put a ground here with wire we connect it. All right, so now we can perform the simulation. Here you observe that the simulation goes very slow because the time steps that I selected was very short. So we are going to maybe change that one already. So we go to simulation here instead of 10 power minus 7, I select the microsecond. It's enough actually microsecond. So the simulation will be much faster. All right. 
Now, in order to plot the results, you can move your mouse on the circuit. Voltage of any node with respect to ground, you have to just click. So I want to find the voltage of this node with respect to ground because the other one is ground. I just click here. Okay. If you want to find the current of any branch, you just hold on any components and you can click. That will give you the current. And if you want to find the voltage across a component, you can left click and hold your mouse and move to the other point and then release your mouse. So that will also give you the voltage across a component. If you want to delete a graph, you come here, you right click, delete this trace. Okay, so now we have to think a little bit because we observe that the voltage of the capacitor it's 10 volt all the way from zero till 50 milliseconds. But this is actually not what we expected. We expected that voltage should be zero up to 10 milliseconds. At this point, we turn on the switch, so we expected that the capacitor should be charged and reach to 10 volt at the end. But this one is already at 10 volt from the beginning. What is causing this? It's very simple error that we made in our simulation. And that is the switch here cannot be an ideal switch. It cannot have infinite resistance when it's open. Here we set the resistance 1 mega ohm. And we cannot set it to infinite because it causes error for the simulation. So even if you don't set it, LTS bias will consider a huge value, but still that huge value will not be. Now, you have a resistance here, which is one mega ohm, while the switch is off. The capacitor itself has a huge resistance. It's basically open circuit. So if I have a DC source that has been there forever, it means that already we have charged the capacitor to 10 volt. Therefore, we observe that the capacitor voltage is 10 volt from the beginning. And even after we turn on the switch, this voltage will not change because we have 10 volt here, 10 volt here, no current will flow. All right, so now let's see how we can solve this problem. First thing that we have to do is to set the initial condition for this capacitor because in our analytical calculation, we assume that this capacitor voltage starts from zero. So in order to set the initial condition, there are multiple ways. One of them is to add a directive. So you type dot IC voltage of the node that you want. With this command, you can set the voltage of one node to a specific value at the start of the simulation. So for example, this node, we know that it's N003. I can set this to zero. And because this is ground, we also set this one to zero. So at the start of the simulation, the capacitor will have zero volt. If we add this directive into the simulation, and then we run the simulation, we notice that the voltage starts from zero and then it goes up. You notice that the voltage actually is slightly going up at the beginning of the simulation, even though uh, the switch is not yet operated. This is because the resistance of the switch is not that high. So during this period where the switch is off, actually the capacitor is being charged. Initially it was zero, but then it get a little bit of time to charge through this one mega ohm. So if I increase this one mega ohm, for example, to higher value, let's say 100 mega ohm, and if I run the simulation again, you notice that initial value will be almost close to zero because it takes much longer time now to charge the capacitor during this period. Okay, so this is one way to set the initial condition of the capacitor. In this case, actually, I set the initial condition of one node of this circuit. And it happened that this node versus the ground is the initial condition of the capacitor. Let's assume that capacitor is somewhere in the middle of the circuit. For example, if I have another resistor here. Okay, let me, for example, this value is 100 ohm. And this resistor is here. Now, if I set the initial condition of this node 0, in a general circuit, it doesn't mean that the voltage across a capacitor is equal to 0. So therefore, we have to look at another way to implement this. So what I'm going to do is to delete this, right click. So you hold control, you right click on the capacitor, and this window opens. Here in the SPICE line 2, what you have to do is to type IC is equal to the value that you want. For example, I want the capacitor to have an initial voltage of 0 volt. This means the voltage across the capacitor would be 0 volt. 
All right, so now if I run the simulation again, same way, voltage zero, and then it starts to go up. Even if I delete this resistor and I connect like we have the original circuit, you notice that if I run the simulation, we still get the same result. So by this way, we can set the initial condition of a capacitor for a circuit, or using that directly, we can set initial condition for a node in the circuit. If the value of the off resistance would be smaller, very smaller, let's say 0.1, obviously you notice that during this time, even though the switch is off, the capacitor will slightly be charged because it's connected. And so this is not what we solved in analytical scenario. So this resistance has to be a large value. Now this is done. Now we are going to check if the answer that we obtained here matches with the analytical formula that we calculate. So in order to do that, we are going to plot that analytical formula on this graph. So you right click, add traces, and here we are going to type that analytical formula. So the value is 10 volt multiply. It's one minus exponential minus because the time constant is one over thousand. So it comes to the denominator, it becomes 1000. So this is 1000 multiply. So the parameter of time here is not T, but it's time. So I have to write time minus because the switch was operated after 10 milliseconds. So here is 0 0.01. Okay, so this is the exponent multiply U time minus 0 0.01. So many parentheses. So you notice that the analytical formula that we obtained and we plotted here perfectly matches with the simulation result that we calculated before. So our simulation is very correct. All right, so throughout this video, we have learned how to start with LTSPIs, add a voltage control switch, add initial condition to a capacitor, initial condition to a node, also how to plot an analytical formula in LTSPIs platform and compare it with our simulation result. All right, so this is basically the end of the video. In the next video, I will show you how to work with coupled inductors in LTSPIs. Bye.